So good morning, Assembly Church. What we are going to uh, continue going over is changing the way we think that leads to a prosperous life. So we've been talking about renewing our mind. Yes, um, we're kind of, I think we stopped at uh, two. We stopped at um, two last time, right, in our review? Yes. Um, so the number one was, in order for you to renew your mind, you must be born again, right? right? You must be born again. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You must know um, God and Jesus as your Lord, your Savior, um, to even start that process. To renew your mind is to renovate your soul, right? So when you're renewing your mind, that's just... The Bible talks about it's a piece of it. Mm -hmm. We all have damaged souls, right? So with that damaged soul, for you to live in the fullness of God, that has to be taken care of first. Mm -hmm. So in other words, your damaged soul hinders you from receiving God's best, right? So... For instance, if you've lived in poverty your whole life, then the goodness of God in your mind mm -hmm. is different from the goodness of God mm -hmm. in someone who didn't live in poverty. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's different levels. God wants to free your mind, heal those damaged uh, emotions, uh, uh, your soul, so that he can give you his best. If you notice, uh, Paul said when um, uh, the church of Philippi were, um, he was in jail and they were taking care of him. And because they took care of him, he said, and my God shall supply all your needs according to, your rich, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Right. My God. That's right. So when he said, my God, it's like, okay, it's the God that I know to his fullness, mm -hmm. according to his riches and glory. Mm -hmm. Right? right. Mm -hmm. So, oh, go ahead. Because the God that you know might be limited. You might not have a full revelation of who God is. So your God, maybe he can't do all those things. But my God, the one that I know, he can do all things. That's right. Right, right. And for the church of Philippi to receive that, the fullness of what he's saying, they need to come up. Right? right? right. You understand know what I'm saying? Right. They need to come up. Paul is talking about a God mm -hmm. that will meet their needs in full. Mm -hmm. Right? According to his riches and glory. Right. Right? right? right. By or through Christ Jesus. But for them to receive that fullness, they have to free their mind. They have to get rid of the old junk. They have to get rid of the past. They have to get rid of all the other stuff. That's keeping them low. So, well, I think it's a, um, uh, I think it's a quote on Christina on your email, Jeff. Um, where you think you can, or where you think you can't. You're right. You're right. You're right. Is that what it says? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm butchering it, but something like that. <laughs> but um, the Bible says that guard your heart. Mm -hmm. From it comes the issues of life. What that means is, from how, whatever you think, that's what's going to hold you back. Mm -hmm. Those act as boundaries in your life, right? right? So why does the word work at a greater level for someone else than the other? Well, their soul. Their soul is, is healed or renewed to the word mm -hmm. Where yours isn't. Mm -hmm. You can't go where you haven't seen. You can't get what you can't comprehend. You have to see it. The Bible says without vision, my people will perish, right? Right. You have to have vision. God told uh, Abraham, look, see, right? Mm -hmm. Not only over the land, but look up at the stars. Mm -hmm. I need you mm -hmm. 
to come up hither. Because I don't care how powerful God is, he's limited by your faith. Right. He can't work in your life past your faith. You're begging God to do things in your life that you can't contain or handle. Right? right. Mm -hmm. It's according to your faith. According to your faith. According to your faith. According to your faith. That's the courtesy of heaven. Right? So, let's dive into this. Let's review really quick um, uh, points one and two. Uh, point one was uh, you must be born again. Now your soul is made up, and this is from um, B.W. Um, he says this, your mind, will, and emotions, we know that, and then your intellect and imagination. Your intellect and imaginations as well. That's what your soul is made up of. And we must renovate our soul. And our first process is to be born again. Um, number two was, and we can stay on this a little bit because I know um, you want to kind of talk about this a little bit. Uh, the sanctification process is a progressive process, yet a mandatory process. So to renovate your soul or to heal those damaged emotions, it's going to take some time. All right? That doesn't mean you're worse or bad or whatever you want to call it. That has nothing to do with it. Your spirit is perfect. You die today. The Lord comes today. You're going to heaven. Once you're born again, you're going to heaven. Got it? Yes. I don't care what your actions are. You need to be healed or whole. And some, some things take longer than the others. Mm -hmm. So it's a process. Let the word and grace have its work. Right? And you be patient with it. But it's going to take some time. Um, what you going to need And so, Pastor, when you gave us this point a couple of weeks ago, that word sanctification, you know, it kind of... Um, tripped me up a little bit. I grew up in a religious church and, you know, they were always talking about being saved and sanctified. And, you know, we don't always feel sanctified. So I wanted to know what is sanctification? Like, what does it mean? What is that process? Because you made the comment, you said, your soul must be built up to receive the inheritance of God. So I was asking the Holy Spirit, you know, sanctification, tell me about that. Um, what does that mean? So, Sanctification simply means to be set apart right. for God's purpose. That's it. So, for instance, uh, we know that we're the church. Regardless of the building, we are the church, right? right. right. So I've heard, I've heard some pastors say, um, well, we're the church and, you know, um, we just, we have to abide by the laws of the land and that sort of thing. Well, I beg to differ. Um, you you got to take the whole word, right? Um, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. Right? right. So you being, you're studying to show yourself approved unto who? God. God. Not man. I can care less what man thinks. Be approved unto God so you can rightly divide the word of truth. So the word of truth comes complete. It's completion. So you can't take the Gospels, and leave out what Paul wrote. You can't take the Old Testament without the New Testament, or the New Testament without the Old Testament. It's all together, right? right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it comes. The, the New Testament didn't cancel out the Old Testament. It covers it. It adds to it. Mm -hmm. It made, the New Testament made the Old Testament, it's easy for us now. It's not by your own works. Mm -hmm. It's not by what you do. Right? Mm -hmm. So we have to take the entire gospel. And like I said, uh, in Hebrews 10, 25, it says, forsake not the sins of yourselves together, as other believers do. So where does that happen? You understand what I'm saying? Right. Where does that happen? Mm -hmm. So to be sanctified for God's purpose is just that. God is a theocracy. Whatever God says... It's true. That's what we do. It's not a democracy. I don't care what you think. I don't care how you feel. God says it. You do it. Especially those who've been called to the fivefold ministry. 
I don't want to get into because you know we, we next week we're gonna have Pastor uh, Gordon Mueller, and uh, I'm excited about that one. So I don't want to harp too much on it, but we're gonna attack this whole thing. Mm-hmm. We're gonna attack it. Um, but to be sanctified unto God is simply being set apart. You're no longer the world's tool. Mm-hmm. You're no longer delving into what the world does. It's customs. Romans 12, 2 says, uh, do not be conformed to this world, mm-hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind right. so that you may prove mm-hmm. what is that good except the perfect will of God. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter what you think because your thinking mm-hmm. may be flawed. Mm-hmm. Which is what we need to renew our mind. Right. Your thinking can be flawed. So get your understanding, emotions, your feelings, get it out of it. That's not even an equation. Just depend on what God says. Mm-hmm. Period. And so as I was searching this out, the Lord took me to John 17. Can we get that up on the screen? Um, we're going to read it in the amplified version. John 17, and we're going to start at verse 16. It says, starting at verse 16, they are not of the world, worldly, belonging to the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them, there's that word, purify, consecrate, separate them for yourself. Make them holy by the truth. What's the truth? It tells us right here, your word is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Can we pause right there? Let's go back to that scripture real quick. Okay. Just as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. That them is us, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. right? So if he sent you into the world with a mandate, with a, a purpose, who has derailed you? Mm-hmm. Why are you letting the very thing you're supposed to go out and reach Get you off track. Right? right? Whether it's, oh, well, I got to work because I got to make money. Well, no. God will supply your needs. Or whether it's a virus. Oh, well, they say we can't do it. Who's worried you're going to do? You're going to be sent by God or stay home because of the world? You understand what I'm saying? Yes. There's nothing in between there. There's nothing hard to get about that. Either going to follow what God says. Or you're going to do what the world says. Mm -hmm. So now, like Abraham, he considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. Mm -hmm. So what are you considering that's holding you back? What are you considering? Right? Whatever it is you're considering is because your mind needs to be renewed. You're considering something that shouldn't even be in the equation. Consider not. So whatever it is that's keeping you or holding you back, you're considering it. Consider not. Right? Be consecrated unto God. Now, when you take that step, no matter what the consequences, whether it's a virus, whether it's a uh, loss of money, whether it's uh, whatever it may be, when you take that step, God will meet you. He will honor you. No doubt about it. But some of us are so afraid to take that step because you fear the world and its consequences more than God. Right? This church ain't normal. Right? Right. This church is not normal. We're here to do what the word says to do. Mm -hmm. And we will. Whether it's two of us or 2,000 of us. Or 2 million of us. Whatever. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So back to... I, that just really hit me when we went over it. Like I said, I need to I need to wait for next week. Ah, but, <laughs> but, hit, but we can we can continue going. So verse nineteen says, and so for their sake and on their behalf, I sanctify, dedicate, consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified, dedicated, consecrated, made holy in the truth. So the point that I'm trying to get across or that the Lord showed me was this sanctification process is renewing your mind unto the word. He's talking about we're we're sanctified 
by the truth. And what's the truth? We just learned. It's the word of God. So it's the process of renewing your mind that brings about that sanctification Amen. of That's your right. soul. So it's not some scary religious term. I don't want you guys to be tripped up the way I was. It's simply renewing your mind to the truth. Not what the world is telling us, but the truth of God's word. Well, I think a lot of us are lazy to do that process. We don't want to renew our minds. We want to stay where we are. We want to stay in that little funk where we are. Mm -hmm. We think, okay, um, a, a, a huge thing, uh, and I know that we, we, we're, we're um, I'm going to put this, we are in the middle of defeating this virus, mm -hmm. and that's what's big today, but uh, uh, what are some of the normal reasons why people don't go to church on Sundays? Uh, Sports. Oh, I got to work. Um don't want to get up, want to sleep. Don't want to get up. Yeah. Don't want to sleep. They want to go to sleep. They want to stay in bed. Um, work. You know, a lot of times it's work. Well, when you consider all those excuses, we consider all those reasons. When you stay there, what you're saying is, there's nothing more. There's, there's. There's no growth to be had. Like uh, You're refusing to renew your mind to what God is saying. You understand what I'm saying? You understand? You're refusing to renew your mind saying, no, this is it. So, essentially, and this is harsh, <laughs> what you're saying is, I need to meet my own need because Philippians 4, 13 isn't true. It's not real. That's harsh. Isn't that? Isn't it? So we need to have God's word speak louder than the world. How do we do that? How do we get God's word to speak louder than the world? Meditate. Right? Get in the word. Meditate on it. Day and night it says. Hey, being a Christian, a believer, isn't easy. It's not easy. So if you think thinking, oh, you know, God got me, he's got my back, and yeah, he does. But you're going to have to step up. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to do, you have to discipline yourself to study the word. You told Joshua, meditate on it day and night. Right? But the trick, one of the tricks of the devil uh, is because you're so busy with work. Remember, the, the, uh, the borrower is slave or servant to the lender. Right? And he says, stay out of debt. Mm -hmm. Right? Stay out of debt. If you don't stay out of debt, then you have to work. And now who's your master? Mm -hmm. Not God, because they say you got to be here at work. Mm -hmm. You can't say, no, I'm not coming to work because you got bills to pay. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. We got to put God first. Let God, give God a chance to work in your life. Mm -hmm. Right? You have a chance to work in your life. A lot of us, or a lot of believers, want the benefits of that oh, relationship yeah. with God, but oh. they don't want to put the work in. Oh, yeah. Like, I want a 28-inch waist, but I don't want to go to the gym. <laughs> so <laughs> you can't have it both ways. Right. You've got to put the work in. You've got to put the time in. you got to put those tacos down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Acts 20, um, Acts 20, um, verse 32 I want to read that. Um, we can go to the Living Translation. Um, uh, it says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Now listen to this. Yes. He's able to build you up and give you an inheritance with all those he has set apart for himself. What a set apart for himself means? What is that? Sanctified. Sanctified. Right. So now I entrust to I entrust you to God and the message of his grace. Mm -hmm. Grace. Mm -hmm. So that means, hey, listen, as you go through the sanctification process, you're gonna mess up. Mm -hmm. It's fine. There are areas where you're weak. And guess what? It's fine. That great, that's what grace is for. Let grace work on your behalf. Right? You're going to fall. You're going to stumble. Whatever. Okay? 
But what I want to point out is, it's able to build you up. What does that mean, build you up? Fill in the gap. Renovate your soul. Come on, y'all. Renovate your soul. He wants to build you up. Why? Why must you be built up? So you can receive this inheritance. That's for who? All those who are set apart for himself. All those who are being sanctified. You see it? Yes. Go to King James version of this. Okay. And now, brother, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, right? Mm -hmm. So the word of his grace is able to build you up, right? It's able to heal that damaged soul that we have, right? Yes. And so you may be able to give you inheritance among all them which are sanctified. You have an inheritance. Right? You have an inheritance that frees you up from working on Sundays. It frees you up from worrying about getting sick. There's a vast inheritance that we must receive by faith so that we can do what God's called us to do. You, you, you hear what I'm saying? Yes. So we read, so God has called us to do something. We read that, right? Yes. John, he sent them, right? Into the world. He sent them into the world, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how can you go out into the world if there's law saying that you better stay or hide at home? You don't want, you want to obey because I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get sick. Well, I have an inheritance that covers me. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have enough money to go. I have an inheritance that covers me. Mm -hmm. God asks you to believe for it. Faith, right? He right. asks you to pay for it. We have an inheritance that covers us. But it's hard for you to believe because you're not spending any time in the Word. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. Some of you guys are on lockdown, like house arrest. You know why? <laughs> <laughs> because it gives you a chance. It gives you a chance to get in the word, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'm sure you've already binge watched all your Netflix shows. <laughs> <laughs> Can we please give God a chance now? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so your soul, as according to this verse, must be built up. In order to receive God's best. Mm -hmm. Can we agree with that? Yes. yes. Your soul must be built up to receive God's uh, best. Right? right? Mm -hmm. 30, 60, or 100 fold. That's up to you. That's up to you. Whether you receive 30, 60, or 100 fold. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Renew your mind to God. There's so much. We hey, guys. There's so much we're leaving on the table. That's right. There's so much in the room. If you guys have a grand uncle that left you $10 billion and you're like, well, my house is only 300000 so I'll just take 500000 and that's it. Who would do that? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. So why are you doing with God? Mm -hmm. Why are you leaving all that on the table? Right? Mm -hmm. Come on, church. Yeah, Come on. That's right. Do um, you have anyone that? Uh, just that, that that word grace, I don't want us to, to gloss over it. Because like you mentioned, Pastor, when we fall short in the areas that we're struggling with, mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to worry about it or be concerned because grace got, got us. I mean, I know that's not proper grammar, but grace got you. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to recognize that. We need to know um, grace. Yes. So, we're going to dig in number three. Let's go, go to point number three. Yes. Know your inheritance and receive it by faith. So, if you know you have $10 billion coming to you, you're not just going to take $500,000. Right? right? Yes. Am I right? Yes. I mean, you guys are kind of quiet. You guys would? No. no. Because give me a checking account if you take it because I'll take the rest. Right? Um, we have to know what comes in our inheritance. Right? Right. right. So, do we believe 
that healing comes in our inheritance. Yes. Do we believe that? Yes. Yes. Most of the church believes that, right? That's right. right. Yes. Then what's the problem? Mm -hmm. th the problem is they're believing the world is stronger or more dependable than God's word. Mm -hmm. What else could it be? You believe in healing, right? Right. right. Oh, so God hand waxes short? It can't reach? So what's the problem? Why are we taking the world's word for it over God's? We're not doing our part. Yeah, we're not doing our part. It says, and number three, know your inheritance. We know the healing is there. You got to receive it by faith. You have to receive it by faith. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Receive your inheritance by faith. Right. Now, how do I receive this inheritance by faith? This is the problem amongst believers. Let's just say there's a, what is it called, those radio flyer wagons, the red wagons? Mm -hmm. Those little red wagons, mm -hmm. right? Radio flyer. Mm -hmm. So that's your faith. And you're trying to load up God's promises in that red wagon. How much can you really receive with such a small wagon or such little faith? Mm -hmm. When God, God's inheritance takes a load of dump trucks to receive. Mm -hmm. Right? So the problem is your faith. The problem is the lack of faith. How little faith you have. So when something big in your eyes, in this world, comes against God's word, uh, uh, you got a radio flyer wagon. You can't receive God's. Oh God, you know, um, I, I know, you know, uh, Headaches and you know uh, little sniffles, whatever. I mean, I'm your guy. You know, we can do that. But the coronavirus, right? Mm -hmm. Remember when Jesus went to his hometown mm -hmm. and they said he could do only small miracles. That's right. Headaches and things, but no great miracles. Why? Okay. Was Jesus off that day? No. Was he just wasn't feeling it? No. It's the it's his town. Mm -hmm. The spirit of familiarity, right? The spirit of familiarity is like, oh man, that's that's Joseph's boy. That's I right. couldn't do this carpenter. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. We ain't gonna go hear him. Well, you know, let's check it out. Everybody's ranting and raving about him. Let's go ahead and check it out. Right. So they'll check it out with very low expectations. Mm -hmm. Their faith isn't there. Right? They came to see a show. Let's see what he can do. They didn't come with faith. Right? right? Faith. Build up your faith. That's where it's at. So know your inheritance and receive it by faith. Hosea 4.6 says, My people perish for a lack of knowledge. You know, I sent this one pastors, you know, something and um, and and he said um, uh, what I said was something, some precautionary things like, hey um, uh, just, you know um, people are overlooking gas pumps right. they're overlooking that where you go and get gas well, everyone has touched that pump and then what you're doing is you're getting into your car and you're messing with your stairwell, wheel, your keys, your phone, mm -hmm. and you're literally bringing it back. If it's there, you're literally bringing it back home. Oh, so, hey, heads up on that. Response, fear, 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 I don't want to hear it. I said, then you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm going to say something real strong here. If you can't receive information on your enemy without fear coming in, your faith is fake. If you can't receive information on your enemy 
about how how it's attacking you. I'm not talking about how many people are dying from it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not praising it that way. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not talking about the reputation of the enemy. I'm talking about how the enemy is getting to us. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about how the enemy is coming through. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you cannot receive information on the strategic attacks of your enemy without fear coming, you're like an ostrich putting your head in the sand. Mm-hmm. Your faith is fake. It's fake. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. You can have all the faith in the world, but you need wisdom too. Mm-hmm. Don't go around licking gas pumps. <laughs> Come on, I have faith. You understand what I'm saying? There's a line that you walk. Let God give you his wisdom. Mm-hmm. Receive it. Right? So yeah, I said some choice, you know, some choice messages back to him. You're ignorant. Right? We're supposed to look out for one another. Especially the body, the believers, right? right. Look out for one another. I don't want to see someone go down. Especially someone of the faith that's in faith, but just ignorant. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Why go through that? Yeah, I know God can heal you, but why get it in the first place? Mm-hmm. Right? Right. God healed Paul just like that when he was warming his hands in the fire and that serpent came up, that viper came up and bit him. It's poisonous. He shook it off, right? right? Now, would you rather, I bet Paul would rather that that didn't happen anyway. Yeah, God is there for him after it bit him. But do you think Paul would rather just not get bit? Yes. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Come on, church. Right. Time to wake up. This fake, fake stuff won't work. Get in the Word. Know you're protected. Mm-hmm. Right? right? Praise God. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that phrase, fake faith, that really uh, resonated with me because how do you know that your faith is fake? Uh, when fear causes you yeah. to act a certain way, That's right. when you are making decisions, that, was fear. that reaction was fear. Based on no, fear. Fear. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> really? How many guys think the ostrich, the ostrich's defense mechanism of putting his head in the sand is an effective one <laughs> from predators? <laughs> no, he just won't see the attack coming. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. That's what I mean. Not only, uh, I understand. Trust me. I understand. I'm talking about the reputation of a thing. Mm-hmm. Right? That's why the children of Israel were so successful in taking over the promised land. The gates were shut. They're like, man, we heard about you. Mm-hmm. We heard what happened in Egypt. We heard about the Red Sea. We didn't mess with y'all. Right? Close the gates. Close the gates. <laughs> the reputation of a thing can bring fear. And that's not what we're talking about. Got it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. Okay. All right, all right. Where are we at here? We understand, number three, your inheritance. Know your inheritance and receive it by faith. I like this discussion then because I don't have to just throw the teach. I'll sit down. I'll sit down. Converse. Take a break. All right. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, here we go. We talked about salvation. I'm just telling you that. We've got about 10 minutes. Okay. We talked about salvation. Salvation means to be delivered. It means healing. It means to do well. Right? Mm-hmm. So this is what we receive from God. Not just a ticket to heaven. What we receive from God is a life to do well. What area in your life are you not doing well in? It's because your damaged soul has not let God's salvation flow in that area. So we need to renew our mind to heal or renovate that damaged part of our soul. 
right? Mm -hmm. Let God flood in, right? We don't see God's fullness of salvation in our lives because we are sabotaging ourselves by working against him with our own unrenewed mind. Mm -hmm. So we have to recognize that God has that inheritance for us. God has a complete salvation for us. But if we're not receiving it, it's not his fault. Mm -hmm. It's ours. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's ours. It's our fault. Mm -hmm. um, we reject the word. Mm -hmm. wherever, the, wherever your soul is damaged, whatever area that is, it could be relationships. It could be um, rejection. It can be whatever it may be. Wherever it is where your soul is damaged, that's where the word needs to, needs to be. Mm -hmm. But if you don't make a conscious decision to do it, then your damaged soul will wipe what the word says away. It'll wipe it away. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Your damaged soul is stronger than the word trying to be planted. In other words, remember the um, the, the parable of the sower, the, the, the heart, mm -hmm. with its thorny ground, um, thorns, with its hard, you know, rock, uh, with its good ground, and that's what it's right? right. Or the, the wayside, all that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it's talking about. You won't receive it. And so receive it with gladness for a short time, but then when, when persecution or... I'll put it like this. When something, an incident happens that arises, that rouses up that damaged part of your soul, mm -hmm. it throws the word away. It goes back to what it does. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You getting it? Yeah. Some good stuff going on here, right? Yes. Come on, y'all. <laughs> okay. So by rejecting the word, and then another uh, way is we're ignorant of the word. This is what this is all about. We don't know. What's your choke point? Right? Oh, I believe God can pay my bills. You know, like electric, gas. He comes through. And gas is like three bucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> but my rent, my mortgage, my car note. Oh, no, i got to work for that. They're going to kick me out. They're going to repossess my car. What's your choke point? Is God's promise for little bills? <laughs> no. And not and and not the big things? No. So we know it's not God, right? Right. We know God's hand is strong enough in all this, right? Yes. Right? Right. 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 Come on, y'all. Right? right? Right. Okay. So the problem is us, right? Right. right. Come on. So it's in our hands. Okay. God's redemption plan is to restore unto you everything the devil has taken from you. But the problem is you don't know what has been taken from you. You don't know what's been taken from you. You're still in survive mode. When God has restored everything to you, you should be in survive mode. Right. Or you should be in thrive mode. Does that say something wrong? Yeah. Oh, goodness. It's just kind of like, <laughs> you should be in thrive mode and you're in survive mode. Um, you want to add anything? Uh, I like what you said about you don't know what's been taking taken from you. Some of us have lived in this way for so long mm -hmm. that it's become natural. You just get used to it. Um, and that's what the devil wants. He wants you to get used to living at this low level and not ever realize that God has so much more for us. Well, he wants us to live at this low level so we can be ineffective. Right. Mm -hmm. He wants you ineffective. I'm going to go this one, one, one much time to have. Okay, so I'm going to hit this last point. I really need your ears on on this one, okay? There's a, one more reason I want to bring up of why we don't see the fullness of God, the fullness, complete salvation in our lives. 
One more reason. Your mouth. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of the biggest. Mm -hmm. Your mouth. Because even if you knew your inheritance, your mouth is crazy. Talking all kinds of crazy things. Mm -hmm. Your mouth talks all kinds of crazy, demonic trash. And you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. You've been so conformed to this world, or your soul is so damaged, you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. So, that brings up the last point. Know and speak the word only. Okay? Know and speak the word only. Okay. Why is it so hard for us to believe that our words have such an impact in our lives? This one pastor uh, uh, said, um, uh, we're reading, and, and I brought up, um, uh, you know, how death and life, you know, in Deuteronomy, death and life is in the power of the tongue, and those who uh, love will eat the fruit thereof, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's just a parable. That doesn't really mean, doesn't really mean that. A pastor, not a novice believer, a pastor, Right? I don't believe in that name and claim it stuff. <laughs> Does God not say, return my words back unto me? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It'll go out and do what I send it out to do. Mm -hmm. Right? It, not, it won't return unto me void, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go to Romans 10. Let me pull up, bring something up. Let's go to Romans 10. The New King James Version. <laughs> Romans 10, let's, let's start at verse 8. Now, it's, it's up here if you, guys don't, uh, if you guys don't have it yet, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. mouth, and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith. What is it? Word the word of faith. of faith. Let's stop right there real quick. The word of faith. Say it again. Say it. Word of faith. Word, word of faith. faith. A lot of churches out there speak poorly about, oh, the word of faith. The word of faith. Well, this are speaking poorly about Romans. It's the word of faith that we preach. If you're not preaching the word of faith, you're in violation of this. So what's the word of faith? Calling those things that are not as though they were. Mm. Calling those things that are not as though they were. Mm -hmm. Name and claim. It. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let, let's get deeper into this. Verse 9. That if you, listen to this. Mm -hmm. If you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Mm -hmm. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession yes. is made unto salvation. Yes. So we change the course of eternity yes. by what you say. Yes. You understand know what I'm saying? Yes. So why is it we can't change tomorrow by what we say. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I'm about to get up from here. <laughs> Why can't we change next week by what we say? Right. We're saying God's words. We're not making up our own. We're in God's will. Part of our inheritance rejects poverty. Poverty is the spirit. What's all these promises about Overflowing. Your cup running over. You won't have room enough to contain it. Right? Mm -hmm. All these things. Does that sound like a God of just making it? No. It's a God of more than enough. Yeah. How do you receive it? By faith. Mm -hmm. By faith. How do you put your faith in that your faith in action? By action. 
for action. You believe it, you speak it, you do it. What the problem is? <laughs> what the problem is? Right? Right. I fail to see the problem. I fail to see the problem. Oh well, uh, um, that Kenneth Copeland boy, uh, yeah, he's a false prophet, but all the prosperity, well, stay broke there. Mm -hmm. Because I see God made Abraham mm -hmm. extremely prosperous. Mm -hmm. Lot was a tag along, mm -hmm. right? Right. And became wealthy, mm -hmm. and with tents and I'll take a tent. <laughs> That's a cool to houses today, right? right? Tents and camels. Mm -hmm. That's houses and cars, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And King Solomon. Oh, come on! Who was the richest man ever, even to this day? To this day, yeah, equivalent to this day. I mean, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Not so prosperity is bad. No, money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money is the root of all evil. That's right. So you don't come to God because you want to be rich. He loved us, so we love him. Mm -hmm. All these things are a byproduct mm -hmm. of being sanctified unto him. Mm -hmm. It's a byproduct. Expect it. And for you to expect it, you need to receive it by faith. Mm -hmm. So you're simply going to the bank and tell, telling the teller to transfer your granduncle's money into your account. <laughs> well, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in you need to talk to them and say that. That's what it's the equivalent of. Mm -hmm. You're leaving it there. Mm -hmm. It's yours. Mm -hmm. Call it in. Our words... Uh, the primary use of our words is to do what God did. It's to create. It's to build up and it's to tear things down. Mm -hmm. It's not communication. Right? It's not communication. Mm -hmm. Communication is secondary. Mm -hmm. Right? I think we said in our Bible study, um, can bees talk? No. 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 See a talking bee? Hey. <laughs> you might want to stomp on it or catch it and get some money because it's demonic. But if you, it, bees don't talk, but do they communicate? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Dogs communicate. Animals communicate. Birds. Right? Do they talk? No. 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 So do you really think we talk because we need to communicate? Oh. We're made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Say to this mountain, Mark 11, right? Mm -hmm. Say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea. And don't doubt in your heart. Who's doing it? You or God? Yeah. God's the power behind it, but you have to do it. Mm -hmm. He told Moses, he said, hey, um, why are you crying to me? Stretch out the rod I've given you over the sea. Mm -hmm. And it parted. Right? Mm -hmm. Hit the rock. Right? right? We have to stop being babies. Mm -hmm. We have to stop sitting back doing nothing, expecting God to do everything. Mm -hmm. You have a part to play in this. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Go to Mark 16. Mark 16. Hurry, I'm running out of time. Mark 16. We're going to read King James Version. Mark 16, uh, starting at verse 15. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, Jesus, mm -hmm. go, into, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be, yeah, shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. What are we saying here? We have authority mm -hmm. over the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have that authority. Mm -hmm. 
How do you use that authority? By speaking, by speaking the word. Mm -hmm. right? right? If we have authority over the devil, how else do we exercise that authority? Looking at him? No. Thinking real hard. <laughs> <laughs> do you just think real hard about God? No. Do you cry to God? Hey, Lord, you give me authority, but take care of me. No. Right? No. If you've been given authority, then that means you do it. You. Mm -hmm. So you have the power of authority to do something. Luke 10, 19, right? right. Yes. We have that power. We have that authority. Okay? Listen to this. If you knew the truth that Satan has no legal right to afflict you with his sickness, disease, poverty, or any part of the curse, then you will begin to rebuke that infirmity. And Satan knows if you know who you are. Mm -hmm. So whatever's coming against you, whatever's holding you back, I think that was quoted by Bill Winston. If whatever's holding you back stays and succeeds it's because you don't know or recognize the power or the authority that you have and you're not using it. Um, okay. The, close, the closest the devil can get to attacking you is oppression. Because of that unrenewed mind or unrenovated soul. That's how the devil is able to oppress you in certain areas. Because your mind is not renewed. If you deal with depression, then I will strongly question if the Holy Spirit is abiding in you. Depression is the spirit. I question if the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you if you're if you're depressed. Has God redeemed redeemed us from the curse? Yes. yes. He has? Yes. yes. Let me end with this. Go to Psalms. Go to Psalms one oh seven. Our words are extremely powerful. Our words are extremely powerful, right? Right. 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 And God has redeemed us from the curse, right? Right. Okay, let's look at verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Let us say so. Stop keeping quiet. Are you been redeemed? Have you been redeemed? Yes. 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 Then say so. There's power in your in your tongue. Mm -hmm. There's power there. Say so. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let anyone, I don't care if it's a pastor or a man of God, that you might respect. Speak the word. Speak it. Always. Speak the word. Amen. Let the redeemed say so. Right? right. Not think so. <laughs> right? Yeah. Say so. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. You want to close the prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to assemble ourselves together as your word says. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to hear your word. Your word teaches us that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. We receive everything that you have for us, Father. We receive everything that your word promises us. Our full benefit package, our full yes. inheritance. Yes. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit, for opening our eyes, our spiritual eyes of understanding mm -hmm. so that we know exactly what it is we're entitled to and so that we learn how to take it by faith. Thank you, Thank you Father. We will open our mouth as, as Pastor just spoke and we will speak your word only. We will not speak what the world says. We will not speak what the enemy says. We will not speak what our unrenewed thoughts are. We will only speak your word and then watch it come to pass. Father, we take our place right now as sons, sons of God, taking authority over our world and everything that we come in contact with. Father, your word says that every place that the soles of our feet shall tread upon you have given to us right. so we take authority over it we take authority over the coronavirus yes. we declare it defeated it's a defeated foe in the name of jesus thank you father we plead the blood of jesus over the assembly church over every member of this congregation that is present or not present we declare that we are the healed of the lord that's right, that's right. We declare that no sickness, no disease can take hold on us because we have the blood of Jesus covering us, protecting us. We dwell in your secret place. We dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Thank you, Father. We stand on your word. We give glory and we give honor to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.